Okay, a quick video here on the force of gravity. Um, we're going to do a more in-depth look at the force of gravity in a future video. But right now, we're just going to, again, do a, a very quick little video here to talk about how to calculate the force of gravity near the surface of the Earth. The force of gravity follows some big equation that looks like this. But as long as you're close to the surface of the Earth, most of the stuff in this calculation is the same every time. All of this stuff, in fact, if we consider this to be the mass of the Earth and the radius of the Earth, all of this stuff is basically the same for every calculation. What that means then is I can simplify the force of gravity into what all of this works out to times the mass of the object. So the force of gravity near the Earth is simply going to be negative 9.8 newtons per kilogram times the mass. This little thing here is sometimes called the gravitational field strength. That's a useful number because what it does is it gives us an idea of how strong the gravitational force is without knowing the mass of the object that it's working on. So we could say on, on Earth the, the gravitational field strength is 9.8 meter or newtons per kilogram. On Jupiter it's 25.4. On the moon it's 1.6. And what that's going to tell you is Jupiter has more gravity than Earth and the moon has less gravity than Earth, and you don't really need to know what that's acting on before you um, before you know how how strong gravity is going to be, at least relatively. Because it's important, it's given its own little name, little g, and so this equation is sometimes written that the force of gravity is equal to m g where we know that g just is equal to negative 9.8 newtons per kilogram. It's not always expressed newton per kilogram. Remember that a newton is one kilogram meter per second squared. So if that per kilogram, then the kilograms cancel out and we could say that this is negative 9.8 meter per second squared. Okay. Now I'm sure we remember this number from the last unit as acceleration due to gravity. So keep this simple, the force of gravity acting on let's say a 60 kilogram object, it is as simple as to say negative 9.8 newtons per kilogram times 60 kilograms and we get a negative 588 newtons. Now you'll recall that the force of gravity is a vector, so the negative sign on that number is a reference to direction, and this is assuming that our negative direction for something like a force of gravity will be down. So that's why it's negative 588, or 588 down. Now what we're going to notice here is that the force of gravity is proportional to mass and acceleration is inversely proportional to mass, which means as I calculate the force of gravity, I'm going to divide, I'm going to multiply by a mass, and when I calculate acceleration, I'm going to divide by a mass. If we multiply by something and then divide by something, what we can see is it doesn't really matter what that something is, because it's always going to cancel out. So here I can say, for example, that the force of gravity is equal to mg, which is equal to and if that is our net force, then I can use the equation I got when I did Newton's second law, mg is equal to the net force is equal to ma. And I can see here where I multiplied and divided by the mass, and I can get that my acceleration is always equal to g, or negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So mathematically, that's why 
the acceleration due to gravity discussed in the last unit, we assume all objects fall at negative 9.8 meters per second squared regardless of their mass. Uh, conceptually, the force of gravity goes up as mass goes up, acceleration goes down, Hmm, what happened there? Oh, force of gravity goes up as mass goes up, acceleration goes down as mass goes up, and so this up and this down cancel each other out, and acceleration remains the same. Now, a quick note here. Um, we made an assumption right here we said that the force of gravity is equal to the net force. And if you'll recall, during all the stuff, when we did acceleration due to gravity in the last unit, what this means is that we are ignoring all other forces, like wind resistance, this is a pretty, oh, I don't know what I'm writing there. This is a pretty good assumption when it comes to objects that are moving fairly slowly or objects that are small and dense. But as you get big, wide objects moving faster and faster and the wind resistance becomes more important, then the object isn't going to fall at negative 9.8 meters per second squared, but something less than that because the force of gravity will not really be equal to the net force. So that's just a little bit on force of gravity and and acceleration due to gravity.